Mahashi describes mm -hmm. Shiva as eternal silence, infinity, unboundedness, transcendence. 12 October 1975, Courchevel, France. Atmatvam Girijamati Sahachara Pranashari Ramgraham Pujate Vishayopabhogarachana Nindra Samadhisthiti Sancharah Padayopradakshina Vidhi Srotrani Sarvagiro Yadyat Karma Karomi Taddata Khilam Sambhotavaradhanam Upanishads des <coughs> describe the state of least excitation <laughs> as Shiva. <laughs> Shivam Shantam Advaitam Chaturtham Manyante Sa Atma Savigyaya Shivam What is Shiva? Shantam Eternal Silence Advaitam non-dual unity hmm? infinity and boundedness immortality shivam shantam advaitam chaturtham manyante we take it to be the fourth the fourth state of consciousness out of the relative activity and silence out of relativity, it's the transcendence. That is Shiva. <coughs> Shivam Shantam Advaitam Chaturtham Manyante. What is that? It is the self. Our self, your self. Hmm? It is the self of everything. It is the, it is the pure life, pure intelligence your existence, Chaturtham Manyante, is the fourth state of consciousness. We uphold it to be fourth. Hmm? In the state of ignorance, we uphold it to be the fourth. Hmm? Chaturtham Manyante is Atma, that is the Self. It's our own <coughs> being, being. Savigyaya. That is worth knowing. That is the object of knowing. It's a very great truth of life. And this, this song describes what it is in its manifold aspects. The state of least excitation what it is in its states of excitation, in its different states of excitation. Atma Tvam, the Self. <coughs> what is Atma? What is Self? You. Thou art that. You are the Self. You means something other than the experiencer. Experiencer is the self. You can be attributed to any object of perception, any object of experience, any object of knowledge. And what the Upanishads say? That Atma, which is the fourth, that state of least excitation, is worth knowing. In this, any object of perception becomes worth knowing because every object of perception is nothing but the Self. 
Objective perception means excited state of what? Excited state of this state of least excitation. State of least excitation is the self. So every object is the expression of the self. Expression is in its pure value that of which it is made. It is made of the self. A beautiful vision of unity consciousness. You are the self. Hmm? Homogeneous wholeness, <coughs> unified awareness recognizes everything which is different from everything else, the whole field of difference and diversity in terms of the self. Atma Tvam. You are the self. Hmm? Girija Mati. The word Girija means born of Giri. Giri here will take in, term, in the meaning of a mountain. Mountain in the meaning of huge, big, great, enormous Brahman. Mati means intellect. What is intellect? Is born of the great. Giri Ja. Born of the Giri. Born of the mountain. Born of the huge, enormous, great Brahman. Hmm? You are the self. And what is another element that one experiences? Hmm? The extreme transcendental value universal value is self. And what is the individuality that is little grosser than the self? Intellect. What is that intellect? It says Girija Mati. Born of the great, born of that huge, enormous unboundedness of Brahman is the intellect. The first impulse of creative intelligence. Pure in creative intelligence, pure intelligence is yourself. It is in this that the science of creative intelligence says, unfoldment of full potential of yourself. Hmm? The teacher of science of creative intelligence teaches what? The unfoldment of the full potential of the self. He shows in the student, the self, Atma Tvam, thou art that which is the self, enormous and bounded. From thee is born the intellect. Hmm? Into thee is the impulse of thyself which rises as intellect. The so intellect is just the impulse of the self. The self, which is state of least excitation, and state of least excitation present in all the excited states. The intellect, which comprehends Brahman, permeates in its unexcited value, in the value of the self, it permeates all over. And because it is value, it permeates all over in the value of the Self, it is capable of comprehending the enormous unboundedness. Brahmi Chaitana, hmm? Brahman Consciousness, Unity Consciousness, is that state of intelligence which is wide awake in itself, in its omnipresent state. And then, impulses start, and those impulses are the waves of intellect intellect, individual, has its stand 
or basis or essence of life structure in the cosmic intelligence which is unexcited state and then excited state is the intellect different intellect different display of creative intelligence all over in the entire universe is yourself it's a beautiful vision of the total process of evolution and the supreme state of evolution you are the self and from the self is born the in- intelligence the waves of intelligence girija mati the intellect is born of the self and it is the intelligence which is at the basis of all evolutionary process and all expressions of the unmanifest it's the same thing that quantum mechanics says state of least excitation present in all the excited states all the excited states are the expressions of that non excited states it has to be taken on the level of consciousness and then it becomes a field which can comprehend the enormous and bounded field kiriya tvam atma tvam kiriya mati and with the with the intellect the de- display of intellect is by virtue of prana it is prana which is which gives motion to intellect prana which gives motion to intellect what gives motion to behavior friends <laughs> So this line says the different ups and downs different degrees of breath are the friends which which uphold <coughs> behavior behavior of the intellect is on the level of prana if the intellect is very active prana is very active the intellect is silent prana is silent both go together and in their various structures in their various degrees of expression they are friends together this brings in the likeness the element of likeness the element of harmony in the midst of all diversities the different divergent values in creation they are just the different expressions of the prana which serve to be the friends of intellect the intellect plays with them all intellect <coughs> moves with them all hmm? here is the knowledge of how creation evolves stays in its divergent values and moves on to higher states of evolution every state moves on to higher states of evolution two elements are counted the three elements are counted the self the intellect which is an impulse of the self and then the prana which gives direction to intellect it's a beautiful analysis of what creative intelligence is in its unmanifest value it is the self and when creative intelligence in its unmanifest value is myself then i can live my own full value <coughs> if it were not the case it would not have been possible to live the full value of creative intelligence but because the unmanifest entirety of creative intelligence is myself it's possible to display one's full potential and it is in this that we find quantum mechanics establishing all possibilities on the level of state of least excitation state of least excitation is a field of all possibilities it is the home of all the laws of nature the intellect which is in tune with the self and is surcharged with prana 
is a charge with that life energy. It is a field of all possibilities and it has expressed itself into varieties of movements and actions and the display of the whole uh, diversity in the universe has come along. It's a beautiful, beautiful words. Atma tom girija matihi sahachara prana shariram griham the physical manifestation, the material manifestation of that pure intelligence which is in its unmanifest value is the self, in its first impulse is the intellect and prana it is to give energy to the intellect, to give direction hmm, to the whole manifest world and then where do they reside? Shariram griham, shariram, the, 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 the physical structure, the body. All the manifestations are nothing but the bodies of pure intelligence, the bodies of prana. Prana gives the direction to pure intelligence, to intellect. And then that expresses different values different values of that absolute unmanifest. And that is the reason why we see so much of variety, so much of differences, because that absolute is infinite. Infinite being the source of the finite, the finite could afford to express itself into infinite ways, infinite varieties, infinite expressions. This is what it means. Atma tvam girija mati sahajara prana the prana, different values of breath which is giving an evolutionary direction to everything that is there in the expressed creation. Shariram griham, griham, home, body is the home. This immediately separates the body with the self, immediately brings about a distinction that one experiences in cosmic consciousness. This is the body, I am that, I am a witness to that, I am separate from that. Immediately it establishes a, a relationship of the subjective and objective reality, even though the objective reality is nothing but the expression of the subjectivity, but there is that kind of separation. And this kind of separation begins to be clear when the analysis of the creation begins. When intellect analyzes what is creation, it finds two values, objective and subjective, the prana and the intellect. Prana may be associated with, the, with existence, with material expression. So, in its expressing values, there is sequential development, atma, intellect, and that is self, intellect, prana, various aspects of prana which structure the family of activities, different kinds of activities, different friends gather together and where they all reside in the body. So in the process of manifestation, it starts from unmanifest and then expresses itself into impulses and then variety of it. And then once the variety comes, the unmanifest value of intellect and prana and eventually the unmanifest value of the self, they all get covered by its, their own expressions and the expression becomes a shell to hide the inner reality, a coconut very expressed value and inside its wholeness, hollowness, holiness. <laughs> but there is a concrete shell to it and this is the body. It is made of the same material, eventually the same material, the self, but it is now expressed in the body. So the body and the indweller together. body and indweller together. And this is what the Upanishad, which we said, demands that Shivam, Shantam, Advaitam, Chaturtham, Manyante, Saatma, Savigyaya. 
Shivam, Shantam, Silence, Advaitam, Non-Dual, Unity, Wholeness, Non-Differentiated, Infinity, Abstract, Absolute, Unbounded, Non-Changing, Shantam, Advaitam, Chaturtam, Fourth it is, Go Beyond the Three, Waking, Dreaming, Sleeping, you get that state of least excitation. Chaturthamun Satma Savigyaya. That is the self and that is worth knowing. That is the object of knowing. All the inquiry to know more, to know more, all the field of knowledge proceeds to uncover that which is beyond all concrete values. The home. You find what you communicate first is the home. It's not the indweller. Go deep into the home. Great excitations, great hmm, entropy. You go deeper into the en- value of the entropy. You get into lesser entropy, lesser chaos, lesser diversity, lesser change. You go more towards non-change. You go away from the change and then you find that Shivam Shantam, that Shivam Shantam, eternal silence, the state of least excitation. And its, oh, its expressions are all these. Upanishads say, that is worth knowing. Sa atma, sa vigyaya. That is the self, that is worth knowing. What is the reason that is worth knowing? Why, why know something that is beyond the sight? Why not make hay when the sun shines? <laughs> <laughs> because that is the source of all that is there shining in the sun, something that is more valuable, something that is the home of all expressions, something that is the source of everything. That is why diversity, even though the unity is researched or evaluated or eventually experienced through the gross, the value of the gross has its has its importance on its own level. The value of the subtle has its importance on its own level. The value of the transcendence has its importance on all levels. And that is why know that which is important at all levels. Sap, important at all levels. Leaves, branches, flowers, fruit, sap. Know the sap. Know the sap, handle the sap. Know the self, handle the self, everything else will be handled efficiently, effectively, profitably, beneficially. So there is that, this is knowledge, hmm, which uncovers one area of life, enlivening which everything will be enlivened. Enliven the self. Prana will be enlivened, intellect will be enlivened, and yes, and when the prana and intellect are enlivened, the entire course of life, the whole field of evolution will be enlivened, and with that, infinity will become a living reality in the finite transient values of daily life. When this has been established, then the next line, brings the applied values of this. Hmm? What is that? Atma, Tom, Girija, Mati, Sachara, Prana, Shariram, Viham, Puja, Te, Vishayo, Bhogarachana. The word Puja is associating oneself with the object worth associating with, that is Puja. <laughs> That is, the pranas lead on to their own finer values, intellect leads on to its own finer values, and eventually, atma tvam. You are the self. That is declared by the prana in its transcendent value, that is declared by the intellect in its transcendent value. And then, this path is called puja, communion. And 
What are the means of communion? Vishayopabhogarachana. Vishayopabhogarachana. All the means of enjoyment through the senses, through the eyes, ears, smell, sense of smell, sense of touch, sense of taste. All these senses become the roads of experiencing. And these roads of experiencing, it is they who are responsible to lead the intellect and prana to the experience of finer and finer means, more and more and more and more, till more than the most is transcended and Atman, Self, is realized. This is Puja. This is Puja. We were talking of invocation. This is invocation. This is Puja. Where? The means of perception lead on to the goal of all perceptions more than the most infinite, unbounded, eternal fullness of life. How it is gained? Through the means of experience. Senses are the means of experience. Mind moves through the senses on the field of sight, sound, <coughs> touch, smell, taste. All these means of perception of the world outside become not they become, they are the means of unfoldment of Tvam as Atman, you as the Self. Because one approaches, approaches to the body and then to the mind, intellect. Intellect reverberating has its value in the prana and then eventually the Self. When I approach a friend, where he may be, his body is there. And then what his recent thinking is, when I approach his, on the level of his body, when I approach his mind, what he has decided, whether he is going to go with me or not, intellect, decision, and whether he is happy or settled or what, prana, and whether he is fulfilled in his awareness, self or not. So these are the different layers of investigation from the body, from the gross. This is what this line says, that all the means of exploration are these means of I mean, objective perception. All the means of objective perception. So, it says, whatever I am perceiving, I am on the way to Thee, the Self. I am the, on the way to You, which is Myself. So in searching for You, this is a prayer addressed to the Supreme. In searching for You, I am proceeding on and the reality is that You are seated deep in My heart as my own self, and I will find you, and me will find you. This will be the union, communion, unity, wholeness. And this is worth knowing, the Upanishad says. This is worth knowing, because once you have him or your friend as your own self, then you can do anything with him. Then you give the liberty to him to do anything with you, yourself. Every impulse of yourself is the impulse of the friend, every impulse of the friend is the impulse of yourself. Every impulse of prana is the impulse of intellect, every impulse of intellect is the impulse of the self. So whatever is separate, it's not separate, it's one's own impulse. This is what one realizes through every field of activity, every field of participation in behavior, in experience. So, this whole field of experience is the path to find thee, to find me. It's a beautiful verse. What is that? Mitras. 
Mm. And this is regarding the field of activity. And when I'm silent, I find myself in that unmanifest value of unboundedness. Unbounded awareness is the silence. When the pranas are silence, intellect is silence, hmm? deep sleep is eternal silence. So, all the means of activity, all the senses are nothing but gateway to the ultimate. Relative silence is nothing but a representation of eternal ultimate value of activity. Silence is the ultimate value of activity. It is from silence that the activity starts. So whether I am active in life or I am in silence, I am that which thou art. Because Atma Tom, you are the Self. So here is a unity in terms of activity and equally in terms of silence. No matter what phase of relativity, active or silent, it's nothing but you, it's nothing but me. You in me and I in you. <coughs> and all this huge paraphernalia residing in the body. Girya mati sachara prana shariram giham puja te upabho vishyo upabho garachana nidra samadhi sthiti sanchara padayo pradakshana vidhi. Hmm? Sanchara padayo. When I walk, what I am doing? I am going round you, round me. <laughs> Every step of my activity is going round and round and round and round the same thing. You and me. I am going round you, I am going round me, you are going round me, I am going round you. <laughs> so, any direction, doesn't matter this way or this way. North or south or east or west, up, down, anywhere I move, I move, encircling thee, encircling thee. All my movements in any straight direction is in a circular motion, round you or round me. It's a beautiful expression of the reverberating value of unity consciousness reverberating value of purity consciousness. Anywhere move is, it's round the silence. Silence is that infinity, eternal, thee or me, self. It's a very beautiful picture. Pradakshana vidhi. Pradakshana vidhi. That is the method of going round thee. And there is a way what a child does when he goes round mother, he glorifies mother, glorifies himself, going round. When you see the beauty from front, you like to go and see what is behind. <laughs> huh? When you see so, such a glorious field of change, you like to go sneak behind the change and see what is that sort of thing, non-change. This is going round. Having enjoyed the front, you want to enjoy the back. See the whole totality of the glory. For that, nothing else other than my footsteps. As I move around, I move around thee. Moving around of the intellect, moving around of the prana, moving around of the thoughts, moving around of the senses, in the field of experience and non-experience, activity and silence, waking and sleep, is moving around, moving around. So when I move around, I'm going round thee, I'm glorifying thee. I'm locating that center here and center here and center here and center here. 
This is what wave motion is. Up and down. It goes up, returns. Goes up, returns. Goes up, returns. And in this is the structure of the entire creation. This is how creative intelligence moves. It moves, but does not constantly move. There is activity, silence, activity and silence. There is return. Every wave motion is a form of return. Go ahead, return back. Go <coughs> ahead, return back. Up and down and up and down. And in this up and down is the progression. So it's, it's not only encircling the non-moving, but structuring the pace of progress, evolution in this up and down motion. In the walking, one step ahead, then that moving step becomes silent. Another silent feet goes ahead. And then when it has stopped, then the resting feet go ahead. And then the resting feet go ahead. In, in this process of walking is centering of the infinite value. Centering is a word used in many kinds of meditation. It's centering. There is a Buddhist kind of meditation. Just on this word of walking, the idea, and the idea there is to have the awareness open to activity and silent. Activity and silent. Two, active and silent. Active and silent. These two aspects of motion. And the awareness has to be active and silent. Because in walking, both these things fortunately are available. Action and silence. One foot is resting and the other is active. So both these things, silence and activity, they are available at every step of walking. There is a Buddhist system of meditation to walk but have the awareness on these two values, silent and activity, and silent and activity, and silent and activity. A very profound way, on its own level, <laughs> a very profound way of developing that great flexibility on the level of consciousness, which will comprehend both together, silence and activity, silence and activity, silence. It's a very beautiful. Hardly those uh, practicing Buddhist meditation on the concentration on this walking know this reality. What happens actually that the uh, nirvana develops, this method of developing nirvana, opening our awareness to both values, silence and activity, silence and activity, silence and activity. So they walk, they walk and the mind is on the steps. going steps. What these people miss is the attention on the silent foot. Generally their attention is on the foot that is moving. And then the foot that is moving. And when the attention is only on one aspect, then the purpose of this procedure is not achieved. What remains with them is a kind of tiredness and restfulness. You know. But if one could really get to this, the awareness will open, because it will need a very, very relaxed state of mind to comprehend absolutely still foot which is resting and the foot that is active. This is what this line expresses that every foot that I uh, put forward in walking is centering on you, which is centering on me. Consciousness, it is the consciousness that centers. It's the awareness that centers. And centers where? It centers on two levels, which are opposed to each other, silence and activity. This is centering in you and in me at the same time. It's a beautiful situation that is described. Centering on you and centering on me because you are me. Atma Tvam. The self is the. You are the self. From here starts. 
and then says every step of my walk is nothing but puja. Puja means of centering, a method of centering, a, pro a, a performance where one could center. Where center? Center on these two elements, you and me. Means completely opposed. You is all objective, me is all subjective, completely, you, know, you in the field of expression, I in the field of completely unexpressed, unmanifest. Hmm? The state of least excitation and state of excitation, both coming together, and this is centering, putting them together. And what is a means to that? Every step that I take in whatever direction I move, that is my, that is my centering on you. Centering on you is centering on me, because you are me. It's a very, very beautiful, this has brought, uh, this is just, this, just a principle, and has brought that practicality of achievement of unity consciousness. It's just a mirror, it's just a picture of how unity consciousness functions, how that supreme state of life is lived in the mundane fields of activity, everything one doing here, there, walking, Not, there could be nothing more mundane than walking. <laughs> nothing more mundane, crude, superficial, walking like that. And in that procedure, the entire knowledge is discovered. Just because walking is a, is a process of progress in whatever direction, doesn't matter. But it's a progress. Progress is evolutionary. Evolution, the entire evolution, is the expression of the infinite. It starts, every manifestation starts from it. And every manifestation, through process of evolution, eventually attains it. So the source and course and goal of whole evolutionary process is open to one's awareness in this little process of putting steps forward, walking. Stotrani Sarvagiro. Stotrani Sarvagiro. Whatever I speak, every word. Now this was, this was about the, so far it was about the walking. Such a ridiculous, <laughs> crude aspect. <laughs> this is unfoldment of wisdom. Huh? You can see the whole thing any, anywhere. And then speaking also is in the same way, completely automatic kind of thing, no one takes care of it, one speaks. And what is speech? It's expression of consciousness. And speech has its value in putting together the two. One speaks to the other. One speaks to the other, again, this through speech, the communication is established between the two. The difference between the two is minimized through communication. And taking this minimizing value of difference to the supreme value, it is the speech that fills the gap. It is speech that fills the gap. Speech is just the uh, sound waves, it is the waves. And it says, whatever the speech, what is that word? Mm. <coughs> Stotrani. Hmm? Just as the word puja was used in terms of progress towards the, a performance towards progress. Hmm? So another word is used here. Stotra. Stotra is expressions of adoration, expressions of praise, hymns, prayers songs, all to uplift one's awareness, to purify one's feelings. It's just a process of purification which generates from inside and has its influence all over. The expressions of adorations, songs, prayers, all these no, the, every word that I speak is an expression of adoration. Now what does the word do? It brings you and me together. 
any speech, doesn't matter what one says, doesn't matter what one says, it is bridging the gulf between the two, it is eliminating the difference, it is creating unity, it is abolishing diversity and erasing unity. Any, any word, doesn't matter what someone hears, that hearing is bridging the gulf, bringing the two together. Therefore, any word that I speak is word of adoration. Adoration that puts together the differences and melts them all into unity. Just as every foot, that, every, every step that I take, every, uh, in any direction my foot goes, it is centering on thee, centering on me, putting thee and me together. Like that, every word that I speak is centering on thee, putting thee with me and me with thee, putting together, abolishing diversity. It's a means, it's a methodology, it's a, it's a performance to create, to raise unity. Unity is, raising unity means raising wholeness. More and more unity raised, more and more unity raised, more and more unity raised means diversity is less and diversity is less and differences are less and distinction, differences are less means unity is being raised and raised. Eventually it's all homogeneous wholeness and that I am and that thou art. So it's just the raising of unity through every speech that I come out with. Totrani Sarvagiro, the end, all, every word that I speak, all expressions of speech are adorations to thee. And those adorations bridge the gulf between me and thee. Put them all together. So, something that was an object of adoration for me, separate from me, comes closer together as the unity is raised and the means of raising unity is I have just to say a word and that's all that. So every word that I speak is praise to thee to raise unity, to glorify myself and make myself wholeness which will envelop all of thee and all of me together. <coughs> it's a very beautiful expression that Every word that I speak is an expression of adoration, which glorifies, which purifies <coughs> and establishes that wholeness, unity in life. Sarvani, Sotrani, Sarvagiro, Yad Yad Karma Karomi Tattada Kilam Shambhotava Radhanam. Whatever I am doing is taking me towards Thee. No matter what I am doing, I am progressing on towards the Shiva state of least excitation. So all the excitations, all the activities are getting on to the structuring of that wholeness which is the state of least excitation, Shiva. It's a very beautiful expression that sums up the entire evolutionary process. Everything in creation is growing, 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 growing. No matter what a tree does, it grows. Whether it is silent or under the uh, influence of the winds, under the influence of cyclones, moving north, south, every moment in its activity or in state of rest, the tree is growing, 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 growing. So it's a natural process, where diversity is becoming less, unity is becoming more, just the natural process of growth, natural process of evolution. One doesn't do anything other than growing. And where does one grow? In oneself. Self being and manifest state of least excitation, being present in all the excited states, the self being unbounded like a silent ocean or silent ocean. Where does the ocean flow? We see the ocean flows, but where does it flow? Within itself. The ocean flows within itself. It flows, but it flows within itself. Because 
there is nothing that can exceed the range of its existence. The entire, entire universe, the whole eternity, that is the nature of the self. And then when the self moves, where does it move? It moves in itself. And therefore, every activity that I undertake is nothing other than expression of thee or expression of me. It's the whole thing is just the wholeness of life. Nothing moves, nothing does. And if I am found doing something, I am doing it to myself. I am doing it to myself. This huge, huge reality is expressed in the common saying, Huh? As you sow, so shall you reap. Your own doing is what is coming to you. You are moving and when you start to move, the element of time comes, but the waves of time are in the timeless eternity. Like the ocean moves within itself, no matter how it, high it flows or low it goes, ripples or tidal waves, it is the move of the ocean in itself. And here, in this awakening is the end of the search for knowledge. So the entire course of knowledge is contained in this one couplet. Atma tvam girija mati sahchara prana shariram griham puja te vishyo prabhogarachana nidra samadhi sthiti sanchara padayo pradakshina vidhi Sarvani Stotrani Sarvagiro Yad Yad Karma Karomi Tatta Dakilam Shambho Tavaradhanam. Whatever I am doing, Shiva, it's thine own praise. And because Shiva is silent, there is nothing more to say. <laughs>